Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Rise of the Podcast. I'm Jeremy. I'm Kara. And I'm Brownie. And this might look a little different to you because we're still in location at Anaheim, California. And I'll tell you what, we just spent two full days at Galaxy's Edge. Uh, it was amazing. It I'm was super excited to talk more about it. Absolutely amazing. So let's tell you a little bit about the drive here because that was an experience all of its own. Oh my gosh. So it was a 30 hour drive mm -hmm. and the halfway point was Denver. Um, and so we got a hotel room there and we got there. What time did we get there, Chris? Uh, into Denver proper, probably 7.15, 7.30, something yeah. like that. Well, 7.30, like that, yeah. checked into the hotel, met up with some family. Yep, well, went out with my aunt and uncle yeah. to a burger joint down the road from our hotel. Decent burgers. Yeah, I had a mushroom was, Swiss. It was pretty good. That was really so. fun. So we get back to the hotel. We're all pretty tired. And uh, I was about the last one to fall asleep. And that was at 10.30-ish. I think I was asleep by 10. I was <laughs> tired. And at midnight, we woke up to the most horrendous sound uh. anyone could ever wake up to. And that was a robot voice telling you to evacuate the building. It was unbelievable. So it was a wavering tone followed by a... <laughs> it said, emergency, emergency, evacuate building immediately. <laughs> Chris knows by heart. He's like, yep, it's ingrained. Well, yeah, it was like, it was the clacks on us. It was like, eh. Uh, emergency, emergency, evacuate building immediately. Uh, uh, uh. So, so I, I don't know about you guys, but at that moment, I felt like crying. The thought crossed my mind to just stay in bed and right. ignore it. And so, like, we get up, people are, like, you know, banging on the doors, and every you've got a whole hotel trying to exit at the mm. exa exact same time. Um, we get downstairs. No one tells us what's going on. No. None of the hotel staff are able to communicate any anything that was going on. Fire trucks are rolling up. Police are rolling up. Um, it took over two and a half hours to get the answer that finally it was a gas leak. Well, they didn't even start bringing out like blankets or anything for people. It's freezing outside. No, it was very, you know, you know it's a mile high city. It was probably about 50, yeah. 55, oh, yeah. somewhere in there, chilly. I think. Yeah. So, I mean, people are out there in their pajamas. and Yeah. So they finally bring out blankets like... 10 minutes before they decided to tell people what's actually going on. Um, oh, and then so the funny, the, the funny part, <laughs> the crazy, well, I hope you find some humor because that maybe will make us feel a little bit better about right. going through it. But crazy thing was, is the first little bit of information they said was the hotel's not safe and you're right. going to go to your rooms, get your stuff, and then we're going to send you to a different hotel. Well, those first two and a half hours, we were like freaking out. We were like, all, All of our, our camera equipment's in the room. Mm -hmm. My purse is in the room. Chris's wallet's in the room. Yep. We were like, <laughs> what are we going to do? We're halfway to our location. Yeah, it's a, uh, a little bit extra context, too. So we left at about 4 o'clock in the morning from yes. Duluth. Yes, we did. So we drove for 15-something hours. Mm -hmm. And then, like, okay, we're going to crash. We're going like, to meet up with, uh, meet up with yeah. some family. And then we're going to crash for, like, four hours. Right. Like, just enough sleep to get back on the road. Mm -hmm. And we slept for, like, Jeremy and I got about 90 minutes of sleep. Yep. And then it's like, then then we're up for two and a half hours mm -hmm. dealing with this. And we're like, so what they had initially said, like, you know, it's like, okay, it's not safe. We're going to try and find hotel rooms for people, blah, blah, blah. We're, they were initially trying to, like, get an order of people to go in to get their right. stuff and then get out. And then it was like a thing like, we're going to send people to get your things. Right. Yeah, and that's not going to. And we were all like, uh, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> There's no way all well, this equipment's going to come back. When they were trying to even get everybody organized, there was the one guy, like, softest voice in the whole yeah, world. Trying to talk and to he's everybody. like, um, excuse me, everyone. Yeah, and ostensibly like the front desk manager, I think right. it would have been. And then some random lady, she comes in and she's like, she's like, everybody. I need you to start moving into lines. Like, not associated with the hotel, nothing. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it she was, just decided to take over. Yeah, was I was like, oh my gosh. So, you know, so they so they finally made an announcement. They bring everyone inside mm -hmm. and put them in a small space. And then they like, almost are going to shut the door. And it's like, well, we're quarantined. We're never. Yeah, I, I looked at Chris jokingly. I was like, oh, that's it, guys. We caught something. We have to be quarantined forever now. <laughs> um, so then. Uh, Anyway, so yeah, so, we're, so they made the announcement that, oh, the building is safe, it was a gas leak, and you can go back to your rooms. Well, about half the hotel just checked out after that. Right. But it's like, where are they going to go? These are all people, right. you know, that were, they obviously don't, you know, live there, so they need a hotel. Mm -hmm. So we made the decision just to drive on. So Chris and I drove through the Rockies, Kara tried to sleep in the back. 
It was crazy. Yeah, we picked up maybe another 40 minutes of sleep. Yeah, yeah. in a rest area in yeah. the Rocky Mountains. Although, on a side note, there was a beautiful little creek and just, like, trees going up the side of the mountains and we, when we stopped at that rest area, and it was just, like, some of the freshest, coolest air I had ever met. Yeah. But we pushed, like, we, you know, pushed on and we made our way through California, driving through Utah, got stuck in massive traffic in the 20 miles that we were in Arizona. Oh, my gosh. Um, through Vegas. and I will it. say, the second day, I did get the best part of the drive. Anybody who knows me knows I've got a little bit of a lead foot. And so when we were driving through Utah, gorgeous scenery. Yeah. Amazing scenery. Tara, just right but through But it was the 80 miles an hour. Yeah, was it 85 at one point? No, it was, it was 80. 80. I was cruising at 85. Of course. I mean, we were going the speed limit only. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Dear government. <laughs> um, but we carried on and we made it to Anaheim. And mm -hmm. so like in the traffic getting into LA was a little bit crazy, but I think like the last hour we were able to ride on just the high of excitement of, yeah. you know, we're getting that close to Anaheim. Exactly. And so we checked in and even the, in the hotel we're staying at was really fun because they had um, Stormtrooper in the lobby and Chewbacca and... Cardboard cutouts. Cardboard cutouts. Yeah. And it really just set the tone for what we were about to experience because everyone here is starting to celebrate Galaxy's Edge opening. So it, it was just all painted this awesome picture. And for even at the park tonight, um, we'll, I'll, we'll get into this in a second, but like there isn't a lot of um, clear direction on like how to get to the park. Like I'd never been to Disneyland before. Right. You had never been to Disneyland before. So, and Chris, you've been to Disney World. Disney World, not Disneyland. Um, so it was a learning curve. There was a mm -hmm. lot to learn and understand and try to figure out. And so that was a whole unique experience. So if you ever come down here, um, there is like one or two pedestrian paths to get into the park. Mm -hmm. Our hotel was actually pretty much as close as walking. And then you get into, and you get into Disneyland and then there's like two halves to that. But where Galaxy's Edge is, is in the back corner of the park. Right. And when we were watching the fireworks tonight, there was a lady who was like, well, we're going to watch the fireworks, and then we need directions. She had two to. little kids, probably seven and under. Mm -hmm. And so she was like, well, we got to figure out where Galaxy's Edge is. And so I had overheard it, and I was like, oh, do I say something? Do and I she's walking something? the opposite direction. She's yeah. like... She's, she's not she's, going the right way to Galaxy's Edge. Like, where she was previously was practically in Galaxy's Edge, but there's... She was so close, and she turned around. Yeah, with her two little kids. And so Jeremy was like, um, are you guys looking for Galaxy's Edge? Yeah. And she's like, yeah. She's like, where, where do I find it? And so he was like, Jeremy was like, well, you're pretty much there. You yeah. just need to go back that way over the bridge and then take a left. And the lady was like, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. because the map is basically telling me to go around. So she would have gone through like Frontierland, Adventureland, and then back into Galaxy's Edge. And that would have, with two little kids, right. I mean, they would have just, I, I don't think they would have had it. <laughs> right. Um, so we, uh, it's a just ambient LA noise. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think there's a truck outside and somebody was running their water in the other room there, but... We suggest listening to this on the audio version to, if you want to ignore the funny view of your two. But no, anyway, so all jokes aside. So I want to paint this picture. So you walk into the park and you finally get there. And we're going to cut together. Yeah, it's like a overpass was just installed outside. No, but we're going to, uh, I want to paint a picture of what it was like to like, uh, get there. So um, in a video, Chris, I think you're going to put together like a highlight video reel for one of our future videos of like all the stuff we did at Galaxy's Edge. But um, you walk into the park and from the moment you get on the path into Galaxy's Edge, it becomes its own place. And yes. you are on Batu, which is a planet that's referenced in a lot of different Star Wars books. Mm -hmm. um, we'll just throw a couple of like, you know, well, it's I like, think most prominently in the newest the new, Thrawn. The newest Thrawn. Well, not the newest Thrawn, Thrawn Alliances. Um, the one with Thrawn and- it, Thrawn Alliances is the one, yeah. Thrawn Treason is the Oh, Treason's one. Treason came out, didn't it? Yep, just like a day or two ago. Yeah. So I'm super excited to be able to read that one yeah. too. But so Batuu is this planet and it's full of like um, junkers and scrappers and the Resistance and the First Order both have a presence there. And the park is laid out extremely cool because one side pretty much belongs to the First Order. Right. It's like the city. It's the spaceport. Um, that, and that's where the First Order is because, you know, they got to keep got to keep tabs on yeah, who's coming in and out of Batuu, you know? Because yeah, they're trying to police the galaxy. Exactly. Self-imposed police. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, you have the resistance. And so you'll, that's where you'll run into those cosplayers. Right. So, um... Cast members. Cast members. Cosplayers. <laughs> <laughs> 
Disney employees, cast members. Yes. So the first thing we did is, is like, oh, and you'll see it in the highlight reel, but I mean, it was like making my eyes water with just. Oh yeah, the it was it was there. emotional. Star Wars has been a part of our lives since you know we were tiny, mm -hmm. and so to finally like walk into an area where you are immediately immersed into Star Wars, yes. it's like, oh my gosh. It's fantastic. There's a big building with the droids outside. Off mm -hmm. to your left, you have a couple of speeders parked there, yeah. like. Um, he's your repair guy to fix your speeder. And right. Just creates this really cool scavenger speeder town. You know, I, just... I walked in backwards. <laughs> so, <laughs> but all my, the way I'm experiencing it is like I'm watching them go like, oh my god, like they're like like Jeremy saying is like he's like welling up. Was like you can yeah. see like he was so excited. And I'm walking backwards. I'm, I walk slow forwards, yeah. so I walk <laughs> really slow backwards. I'm like. It's like make, like just sort of like teasing out how long like the build up was, and then yes. finally it's like oh wow we're there. It was, oh. it was unbelievable and absolutely amazing. Unbeknownst to us is that we were right in front of the droid building factory. Right. So that was one of the first things that we went in and mm -hmm. did. Um, for anybody who's watching that wants to go to Galaxy's Edge, there's two things right now you need a reservation for: the cantina and the oh, light cantina and lightsaber building. The droid factory uh, is. I think one of the best values for your money, the best bang for the right. buck. It was almost as cool as the lightsaber building. Um, almost. Almost, mm. but it was half the price. Right. And it was unbelievable. You walk in and they've got a giant um, track system carrying yeah. droid parts throughout the entire building. You walk up and you talk to the people and they, you know, it's this many credits and you can get a personality chip. You get to decide between the R2 and the BB unit. And... I built a BB unit. Mm -hmm. I built the R R two the R unit. The R unit. Yes. And um, we each got a personality chip. Kara, what personality chip did you get? I went with a scoundrel. So you made a scoundrel R unit, huh? That's right, I did. Well, we're gonna show a picture of our um, picture of Kara's droid. We'll put my droid over my face and Jeremy's droid over his face. Kara, we're even on the, Stevens, right? We're on the yeah. road. We want to cut down on the amount of work Chris has to do in post. It's a Sure, I'm not asking him to make you look like a droid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I All mean, right. just, you know, a nice round BB ball right here with a <laughs> head on top. Yeah, I'll just throw an antenna. That's enough, Chris. You can just put an antenna there. And that's <laughs> it. Um, so I went, so we, uh, they give you a basket and they give you your personality chip and you carry it over to this conveyor belt and there's tons and tons oh of droid gosh. cars. And as we're walking around later on in the park, a lot of people drilled, built droids and I don't understand how there was enough parts for everyone to do a droid build. It, it's amazing. It's crazy. Um, but anyway, so we you pick out your parts, and so there's mm -hmm. all these different colors. You can pick different colored bodies, different colored legs, different colored heads, multiple different variants of the heads, and you put them all in your basket. And then they have 10 building stations with these cast members that guide you through the building right. experience. And each one just has a couple screws and an electric screwdriver that's like hanging yeah. from the ceiling. I think that's my favorite part because yeah. it does have like it was very Star Wars-ish. Like, yes. I feel like I've seen it in use in Resistance because they're, you know, in a hangar. Right. And, you know, you just pull down the screwdriver and, you know, you hit the button yeah. and you burp, burp. drill in, yeah. you know, screw in the R2 legs or the R unit legs. And, yeah. Ah, oh, so cool. Yeah, and then so for me, with the uh, BB unit, you had to take the tracking system of his head and then lock that into and then, you know, attach that together before you stick it on. That's so cool. Um, and then you flag your, like, cast member, and they come over, and they take your unit, and it's you're, like, the only one who activates at the same time. The only one who activates right. the pairing. And I would imagine it has something to do with um, the... Uh, so that the controller doesn't get synced to a different droid. Right. But it does make it feel, like, pretty cool that mm -hmm. it's just one-on-one. -on -one. So you put your droid in there, and then you hit a button, and then all of a sudden the controller is paired... You, you you hit this big red button and all these white little things pop up and it's like activating motivator unit, yeah. activating logic, cir logic circuit. And your droid's droid head starts spinning around and he starts beeping and it's... Comes to uh, life. It's so cool. <clears throat> it's so incredible. And like Chris, what did you think of like the environment they created in there? I mean, what did it, you know... Well, like many of the other things that they did, it's like the, the attention to detail to just make it seem like that's like this is a droid factory. Right. right. 
Well, and even, yeah, outside they have like the parts of the Imperial probe droid and right. old B1 units. Oh, like, the B1 units are sick. Like in cages <laughs> and stuff like that. And so, yeah, it was, it felt like, you know, yeah, these people, what they do, these people who live on Batu, they go out into the desert and into the barren wastelands and get scrap metals and bring them all back. And they throw all these scraps in and you as a visitor get to, you know, mess around with these right. scraps. And so, the, and then anyways, you're not allowed to use your droid in the park, but you get right. a little carrying box. And your droid will then has a Bluetooth and it'll interact with different things that you get close to and you'll right. kind of come to life. So I felt like I was had like a like an animal in a box or oh something. Like, okay, Jeremy's droid is just this shy little BB unit. Mm -hmm. He barely talks, right? Like he's pretty timid. Mine won't shut up. <laughs> Like, <laughs> she is a chatty Kathy. She has a gun system mounted on her <laughs> two unit. And this thing looks like it's, uh, you know, an assassination <laughs> droid as it rolls up to you and then it just looks up at you as She's it's She's so like, cute. Pew, 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 pew. I love her. So, She's black and white with pink, hot pink detailing. It is awesome. And then we went back today and we made Jeremy's mom a droid. She's yes. super duper wanted one, so we made her. And Jeremy's droid and my droid... Interacted a little bit. Oh my goodness. But oh my gosh. These two R units, they will not stop talking to each other. We, we turned them off for this. And actually you can tell we're really our Star Wars nerds because we didn't know how to turn the droids off. <laughs> so all night long last night, our droids just sat there and interacted with each other. Which apparently affected Chris and Jeremy. I slept through the whole thing. Oh yeah, no, we absolutely woke up and we're like, you know, it was- <laughs> What do we do? How do we turn right. these off? What's going on? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Somebody just walked past. Just another another awesome facet of doing stuff on location. Oh my gosh. <laughs> They're probably like, what are they doing in there? I miss <laughs> I do miss having a nice studio to do this. Oh in, my but, gosh. Um anyway, so that was the um that was the droid building. Mm -hmm. And so then we walked out into the park and there's just oh there's so much cool stuff. Um, when you leave the droid building factory, if you take a left and you swing down this one walkway, you walk right into Kylo Ren's ship. Yes. And there's a huge open area. And then, oh, we went and bought the uh, the Coke bottles that were like exclusive to Batu. Right. And so they're they're in Arabish, the Star Wars writing. Arabish, yeah. Arabish, and then it's got like it looks like a thermal detonator or a grenade. It actually does. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It does. And, it's really cool. And so it's just that de detail and immersion that puts you just right into the Star Wars universe. Um, and then, so then, so we saw Kylo Ren's ship. We went and got a blue Bantha milkshake. Um, okay, blue milk? Is delicious. Amazing. It is good. It, like I said, I described it as, it's like you're drinking a Starburst. Yeah, that's, you I know? think we decided that was pretty accurate. So... Then after you leave Kylo Ren's area, you walk by Olga's Cantina. Mm -hmm, which is basically a bar. And you walk right into the Millennium Falcon. Oh. And what is an experience that was. And we'll go into more detail. We'll probably talk about this stuff like in a lot of the upcoming episodes or oh. at least reminisce back to it. Of course we will. But um, to just shed some light on it, because a lot of people were having troubles figuring out like maybe what it is exactly you do, is Hondo's a pirate that has been in the Star Wars stories all the way from the Clone Wars all the way up to current Resistance time now. Right. And, uh, like, Hondo's hilarious. Oh, my gosh. He's so funny. And he assigns you a mission that you need to go get the thing of coaxium. Mm -hmm. and you need to bring the coaxium back to him, and then he's going to sell it and give Chewbacca some money. Right. And so there are six positions on the Millennium Falcon. There's two pilots. There's two gunners and two engineers. Right. The pilots fly, one controls up and down, one mm -hmm. controls left and right. The gunners shoot TIE fighters and shoot uh, the train with which the coaxium's yep. on. And the engineers are responsible for harpooning, harpooning the train so that they can um, secure the cargo and right. then we can actually escape with it. I flew up and down was a pilot. The pilot who sits on the right gets to push the hyper, or pull the hyperdrive lever and that was just... So whew. cool. Just right there, and it was like, and we all, and it, it was the group experience. I mean, it's so cool you do it with six other people because right. we knew that, like, we knew each other, but we were with three other people. Like the engineers right. on our ship, Chris, were outstanding, just outstanding. They, were, so they did a really good job. We need to clarify. So both of you were pilots. Yeah, we were yes. both pilots. I was, I was left right pilot, and I was, and apparently brakes. Just know that if you do this on the left, you are responsible for the brakes too. Yep, you got to slow down a little bit. Like. 
I didn't know that. Right. Because on the little card it says, you're responsible for left, right. That's it. Nothing else. And so, I, at one point, they're we, like, we, uh, Hanna's like, oh, you need to put on the brakes, you know? And so I was like, what? <laughs> so, anyway, didn't pull on the brakes, did a little damage to the Falcon. No biggie. It's fine. Um, I am thoroughly impressed, though. The lines to get in is really long, and they, mm-hmm. but they're, it, they tell you like right there how long it's going to be until you get there. Well, it's cool, because um, you guys, I don't think, did it too much, but with the Disney app, the Play app, um, you can use your phone as a data pad, mm-hmm. and then there's jobs that you can do to earn yourself credits. And so uh, one of the jobs is you're actually working for Hondo and you're trying to scan and reorganize all of their different, uh, all the different cargo that they've had. Mm-hmm. And so in each different part that you're waiting at, um, there's scannables, yep. and you scan them to figure out what's in them, and then you interact with um, another person, I think your name's Kelsey, in the in the app yep to figure out where it's going to what's inside of it so it's something you can do instead of just standing there being bored yeah they uh, um you can tell it, it's been done to help mitigate the mm-hmm. wait times so that people have something to do that right. keeps their mind off the wait time but it still is impressive to me the line is moving it's long but it's moving right they, it's constantly they moving process a tremendous amount of people that mm-hmm. go through there it was it, it was one of my favorite experiences of, I mean, there's only one ride, but it was one of the coolest things. I mean, it was the most iconic. It reminds me of when Han and Chewie walk on the Falcon in 2015 in The Force Awakens, and they're like, Chewie, we're home. It was like, uh, oh, we're home. Chris, you got to see, like, the area where they sit. Um, well, so, two th- it's like, when we first get in, I thought we'd have a little bit more time. I know. I it's like we okay. got in, and then we were immediately, which, which is cool right. that we were on the ride, like, once we got up to that point, but, like... It would have been nice to get a little bit more time in there to sort of like mess around and sort of like so the like sort of the passenger area is like sort of the the last staging area before right. you go in. Yes, mm-hmm. and like we were in there for like a minute and then we right. were on the well, that's the area, flight deck. the area um, like where Luke is doing his initial yes. training with the training droids and stuff. That yeah. area, that's the area that you wait in before you go into fly. And then. Um, just to describe, so we're in, you're in the cockpit, right? And then there's yes. like a screen that shows what's going on and everything, the thing is on a big like rocker table. Yep. Mm-hmm. So as like they're like moving left and right, the thing is like actually moving around and stuff. And then you're like, you're looking, everybody looks out the same, at, out the window. Yep. So if you're like running the guns or whatever, you just know like I'm on the right side, he's on the left side. So you're targeting stuff on whichever side of the mm-hmm. screen and stuff. So it's like, it's really cool. Right. Yeah, yeah, so it's... like when Jeremy was like pushing forward to make the, the ship dive, like, you all rocked you forward. felt like you were going forward, and like when I tipped to the side, you know, oh, it was so cool. Yeah, so it was cool. really cool. I'm surprised how well you can pull off navigating when you're only controlling one set of directions. Like, right. It was actually totally plot. And like we after we got our groove going, it was. Yeah, there were, there were a few times I was like, Jeremy, you need to dive, dive. <laughs> you know. Yeah, like at the, at the end of the ride when I, we were like d- driving through the asteroid belt. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I was like not diving fast enough. And I'll tell you, little movements Go will make you way. move a lot. Go a long way. Yeah. Um, so you leave the Millennium Falcon, and as you go to your right, you're starting to comp- kind of complete your first circle around the park. And you're going to walk into, there's two diners that are pretty close to each other. One is, what was the name of the first? Docking Bay 7. Yep, Docking and Bay 7. And then the other one was the with the roast. The, Nobody the remembers the name of that. I don't remember the name of it. It's it's just it's in the Merchant's Row. I yeah. think it's Merchant's Row. Yeah, or Marketplace. A, there's a droid, and he's sitting there like roasting Star Wars animals and everything yeah. like that. And um, so you go through there, and we had they handle all the lines really quickly. So there right. was no besides the Falcon ride, there was nowhere where we had to wait in line more Very than just long. a couple minutes. Right. Uh, all the food is themed. All the drinks are themed. Well, I really it's, so Jeremy and I probably had the Melu Run juice. <laughs> Three or four times. Yeah. It was really good. I understand why but, Hera loves Melu runs. Yeah. Well, I had a sour sabak the most of the time. Right. But Sa- sour sarlacc. Sour sarlacc. Sour 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 <laughs> but I had that. See, it was, makes my tongue twist. Um, but I had a Melon, Melon, Melu, Melu run, run juice to end the night. Yeah. And that was a that was a pretty fun uh, it was. remembrance thing. But you go through there and you come down Merchant Alley, and the Merchant Alley is just fantastic. They've got stores on each side with handcrafted, wood carved um, toys and games and stuffed animals. And actually, Kara, you can show off here. 
So if you guys remember this, this is the character Kara cosplays as. Yes. Ahsoka. She's my girl. Mm. I saw her and I told Jeremy, I was like, I need her. No, if ands, what's about spot it, I need her. <laughs> well, it's just too cool. And it, it makes it look, in the Clone Wars, you see a lot of the effect that war has on children in the Star Wars universe, which mm -hmm. is really cool. And so they have, like, these, um, the wooden doll from um, Jin was The holding. one that Jin has, yeah. Rogue the movie one. Rogue One. And so it was like, to see, it really helped cement you to be like, um, what if you were a child in a war-torn galaxy? Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, that would be something you would play with. So it's just... It's just that immersion is right there. And Chris said earlier, see the attention to details. All the buildings are, um, or Kara pointed out, there's metal on the wall. And then there'll right. be the rust where the metal would have run down from like rain over the years. But right. it's already all aged to that point. It's so cool. They did such an amazing job. Well, and then it, on that note, paying attention to detail, like we were walking through Betu at night. Mm -hmm. oh, and we were gonna, walking. Chris, you didn't get to hear this yet. No, you didn't. We were walking from the actual the spaceport over to where the resistance hideout is and as we're walking along all of a sudden you hear this thump 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 and like rustling in the trees and like this animal grunting it's like oh my gosh it actually sounds like there's something right there i think you know? they, they can pull it off because it's dark because like right. the day you can see but at night yeah i could have swore like you're talking over by like where the a-wing and the x-wing yes. yeah, yeah. the, the, they did that during the day did too they? yep did they? i didn't you know guys were the talking about something i totally heard exactly yeah. oh and then it, like the, then like it sounded like something else came up and like it attacked it or whatever and like, oh. there was this whole thing yeah no it, i didn't see hear that at all at night it's really crazy because it's dark all you know all the way up and everything it was it was right. really really believable and so we walked over by like the X Wing and we saw an E Wing sitting there and they had a whole bunch of like Rebel merch for sale right. and it was like just really, really cool. But one of the best experiences. So we got multiple interactions with cast members. Right. And that's what was really fun. Mm -hmm. For some reason, Stormtroopers have it out for me. Stormtroopers love Jeremy. I had three different interactions with them and they were all hilarious. They were. Um, but the one that takes the cake is when we were standing by the resistance part. Chris and I were going over the differences between old X-Wings and new X-Wings. Mm -hmm. And Kara, we're all just sitting there, we're like, really looking at this X-Wing. And then all of a sudden... There's this huge looming shadow over top of us. We're like, what the heck? And we look you over know? and there's Chewbacca. Like the <laughs> actual hairy, full seven foot, whatever, five Chewbacca. And he's just like... <laughs> and then he like he points at Kara's like wearing her her bandolier. like My, um, my purse, like, like a bandolier, bandolier yeah. like Chewie is. Crossbody. And he looks at you, Chris, and... He's like, oh. Nice in the beard. The beard yeah. Nice, you know, <laughs> he like, like rubs his wookie beard and makes some noise. And Chris is like, well, thank you, you know, or whatever, you know. And then uh, he looks at me and he's just like, I had a, I'm going to turn that Chewbacca shirt right now. But I had on my Millennium Falcon. I love her. I'm Millennium Falcon Star Wars. And he like points at it. He's like, oh, 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 oh. And he actually like, like patted the Falcon. Mm -hmm. And then he just like, he put his hand on me and he's like, oh, 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 oh. and he like pats me on the head like a like, <laughs> good rebel. And then, and then he's just like, oh, oh, oh. But um, like they just, you, when interactions happen with guests, everyone runs over to them and then they have to move on because they want the interaction to be spontaneous and feel fun. Right. And I did not see this one coming because we were just so into the environment and so into the scenery that I was just right. completely shocked. But And it was a long interaction. Like it felt, right. it was like a, a good couple minutes at least. I know? regret not getting a picture of it. It was just kind of like, I think we were all so shocked yeah absolutely that the picture just kind of wasn't even well chris had been like ready on the camera so many times and it even like shocked you chris you weren't you know well yeah and like and I, I got the camera ready to do something but i didn't want to interrupt like everything yeah. was like you want to experience the moment so many people will like detach themselves from the moment like i'm going yeah. to get this for facebook or right whatever. it was and it's like i didn't want to i didn't want to interrupt anything that was going on just to be like right. oh can i get a picture because i think the the story and the memory is way more important than having and I, a video i'm not clip. gonna forget it Absolutely oh no, that was the game of forever. Um, and it was it just felt real. And could you imagine like being at a spaceport? I mean, it's it's very much it's, we have the ability. I think you know these people who love Star Wars, mm -hmm. we all have the ability to really put ourselves um, in these situations and what it would be like. And could you imagine like being in a spaceport as just a normal person right. and being in awe of a? We were comparing it to like a normal military plane, you know, like just being in awe of. Mm -hmm. um, like what it's like you kind of get a hint of that in the resistance uh, last jedi with the boy 
who has the ring, you know, and he's like just in awe of the resistance, you know. Yeah. And it's like, oh, look at these guys. They're fighting on your behalf. Well, or, and think about it. Like, say we were just random resistance people. Right. You know, or Chewbacca, Chewbacca, is Chewbacca a, the hero of the resist, resistance. Re- rebellion and resistance, resistance war hero. hero. Yeah. And so to have him come up and tap you on the shoulder and be like, you know. Yes, yes I mean, exactly. be like, Oh my gosh. Oh, it's like Rose when she sees Finn, Finn. you know? She's like, Finn, you're here. Finn, the resistance hero. And you then know? She tasers him. <laughs> so good. I'm glad um, we didn't have to taser Chewie. Yeah. <laughs> right? I think he would have ripped our arms off. Right. Let the Wookiee win. <laughs> yeah. Well, then, so speaking about. Um, like looking at stuff and having it feel like real or whatever. Do you, so that shipping crate we were looking at, there they have a lot of stuff that just has like, so um, stuff that was it Arabesh? Yes, Arabesh, yeah. And uh, it's just like, oh, I wonder what that says, you know. And you right. can, then the app you can translate, translate it, right? Yes. And so the one of the funniest <laughs> stupid moments, there's just this crate sitting outside of where you can go buy like uh, Kyber crystals the and stuff. The Antiquities. Yeah, yeah. And. Uh, they were like, oh, I wonder what that says. Like, oh, it probably says like ammo container or something. And <laughs> we translate and just, it just says keep upright. Yes. You know, like it's fragile U.S. Postal Mail Service cargo. And it's like order. somebody took the time to translate keep upright exactly. into, a, into a fantasy language and then <laughs> put it on there. And it looked like, of it, course it's going to say that because it's something that needs to be kept upright. upright. It just right. the, that level of detail just. Seriously. Well, it was like on the way in to see the Falcon 2. The one, the intake was labeled intake. Oh, yeah, on the engine on the that was like being engine. like, yeah. yeah. And so that was pretty cool, too. But, yeah, the keep upright one is hilarious because it's like you could do that and you really don't know if anybody's going to take the time to translate that specific box at that specific spot. Right. But somebody did it. Like the, sm- the creator of that would smile if they probably knew that we got a good kick out of it or a good yeah. thing. Yeah, props to you, yeah. person who made oh, that. Oh, seriously. So, props it, to the entire design team for Galaxy's Edge. It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So then we did one of the one of the other coolest experiences at Galaxy's Edge. It's we, so it was emotional for me. It was very emotional. So the droid building was not curated, so to right. speak. But the lightsaber building is, There's a, they wrote a story around it. They had music cues for everything. Lights, music, the whole ball of wax. It was such an experience. What? So, yeah, and it, like I said, there no lines. So you have to reserve the morning of your visit mm-hmm. at like 7 a.m., but you pick your time slot and you show up. And from there on out, it's less than 15 minutes. Right. So you pick a style. Mm-hmm. There's four different styles. There's protector. There's natural. There's elemental. The elemental is, is the... Is, so it's power, elemental, protecting, protection. And then the fourth one was like your standard lightsaber. Yeah. <laughs> I don't right. remember what that one ended up being. The, suffice to say, there's four different styles yes. that have a bunch of different uh, variety of components right. within them. So depending on what style you pick determines what pieces you get to mm-hmm. choose from when you do your build. They yep. give you a pin, you put it on, and then you wait. And then when they bring you into this room and the uh, cast member we had to, did a tremendous job yeah. to sell it. And she basically explains like her people go and scour the you know galaxy. You know, spoiler alert if you want to build a a lightsaber there, and you, you right. know, and, and you don't want the story ruined. And you don't want the story ruined. Just jump ahead. But um, if you're ready, we'll continue on. So she goes and she says that they scavenge the galaxy and they get these parts, and that you have the opportunity. You have the ability to use the force because you right. use the force to build the lightsaber. And it's like we might be the new light of the universe. You mm-hmm. might be the new light of the universe. And they give the examples of. You know, Luke and then Ray saves the universe nowadays, mm-hmm. and maybe someday your story will be heard and told and everything like that. And then they tell you, and then they bring out the parts, and they walk you through it, and you assemble it. You get to pick a crystal, and the crystal color determines the blade color. Right. They can be swapped, mm-hmm. and you can switch the crystal out and put in a different one. You can get different crystals. And then, the, I mean, the, the coolest part was, so then, it's just so emotional because you build the saber. And so here is what I built. And here is Kara's. You can see more detailed pictures and stuff over on the blog. We'll take some nice photos of these. So this is the uh, protector one. Very Mm -hmm. uh, coppery and bronzy. Here's actually the activation switch. And inside my saber is a green crystal. Mm -hmm. I picked the elemental one. Um, My obviously switch is right there. But I mean, there are a lot of different different 
options you could choose. Like the end of this one could have had like this bowl, a, a tooth, like a horn or a tooth, yeah, yeah. A horn or a tooth coming off of it. But I really liked, I really liked just the basicness of this one. I just love the leather wrapping. Me too. And then like the, the it looks like ivory, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, on that one, and then just the. The mm -hmm. accents on the top of the sword there, yeah. and then the, the marks on your pummel. So, yeah. so that we have to have to activate them. Ready? Okay, ready. <laughs> so, as you can see, in, in all the games in Star Wars lore I've ever played, I've always wanted to do green, but I always go blue because blue is my favorite. So I thought this time I'm definitely going to go with green, and I couldn't be happier because I absolutely love the look and feel of this green lightsaber. So yeah. And then Carrie, you did the you did the blue. I did the blue one. Yep. Uh, after old Kenobi and you know Luke's first lightsaber, yeah. uh, it's just awesome. So, I um, had I had really wanted white because they Ahsoka did yeah. sell white, white crystals for a while. Um, but yeah, mostly because of Ahsoka. Um, but they've been sold out of a number of different things. Yes. Which I think we talked about in our previous podcast. Yeah, right? all the personality chips and stuff. So yeah. Mm -hmm. those had gotten but now, stacked. as of right now, the only thing that we've noticed were sold out was like the Sabacc game. Oh, which I want. Mm -hmm. The, um, what's the what's the game they play in the Falcon? Uh, the, the Hollow Chess. The Hollow Chess. That was sold out. Um, Ahsoka's lightsabers sold were out. sold out, which that was one of the main things that I wanted to come like, here sort for. of clarify so in addition to being able to build custom lightsabers yes. they do have in the place you can buy supplementary crystals you can mm -hmm. buy like what do they call like legacy 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 sabers. lightsabers yeah um and so I had really wanted to purchase Ahsoka's lightsabers um but those are sold out and then the white and the yellow crystals were sold out too yeah um something cool is if you buy a red light crystal um, yes. You have a very, very, very slim chance of getting a black crystal, and we were actually able to find one, and I couldn't believe it because people were using lights before to like try to figure it out, so now the staff holds on to them, and they just give you a small selection you get to choose from, and we happen to get one, which is really cool. And you can there's um, Sith and Jedi holocrons that you can put them into, and mm -hmm. they'll play different stories depending on which crystal is inside. Um, the whole thing, it all is just all this lore wrapped into to just one place to live and experience and you can get out as much as you want mm -hmm. um from it all i'm just I absolutely had such a good time at the park i did too like honestly yeah a lot of stuff there costs money but for me tonight even i had a fine time just sitting there and just soaking it in because this is the closest I'm ever going to get to Star Wars. Kara said she wants to just carve out oh. a, a hole in the rock wall on the way in and then just move in there. Uh, seriously, I be, would. Yeah. Disney, I will be a stormtrooper for you. I am the correct height, I promise. Oh. <laughs> So the stormtrooper actions we had, we had one of them was trying to get some information out of me for where Poe Dameron was. Yes. Uh, another one was uh, interested in how much time I was spending on my data pad, which is my cell phone. <laughs> and uh, the best part was, is he's like, you seem awfully interested in that data pad. What are you up to or whatever? And I said, uh, nothing. And he goes, all right, move along. <laughs> you know, like, it was just, it was so awesome. And then, well, one of the funniest things that we heard was these two stormtroopers are walking down the road and they're like, so, this is bad too, hey? And the other one said, that's affirmative. That's right, it's like, affirmative, yeah. <laughs> it's like just this hidden little video game, like, uh, just like so bonus funny. Easter egg or something. Yeah, they weren't actually interacting with anybody. They were just talking to each yeah, other as they were walking. Just having their yeah, thing. Yeah, it felt like we stumbled onto some secret dialogue or something like that. Yeah. Um, but that is like our coverage. Just put it into perspective. I mean, I think... If you're an average Star Wars fan, mm -hmm. four hours to a day, I don't even know four hours would do it. A full day is, would get you the full experience. We okay. spent two days there, and at this point, there's like a lot of stuff I still want to do, but I, it would be reliving at that point. Right. But I just want to soak it in to have that, the real uh, long-lasting effects of the environment. And I also enjoy people watching and just watching how other guests interact with the experience right. as well. Because you just know there's so many people around you. Like we had a girl who came up to us and she wanted to have our droids meet each other, and they're like, you know, beeping and booping in there yeah. and everything like that. And, to, and oh, tonight, Chris, when we were watching the Falcon, 
and just enjoying it at night. Oh, Kara hacked it and got yeah, the steam to go say, off. Yeah, that's a fun she little thing. She just kept thing. hacking it. And she kept going, Psh, yeah. Psh. <laughs> Whenever you hack the Falcon, it blows out steam from the bottom. It's super cool. It really does. The steam answer. budget is through the roof now. Because Seriously. Of well, I did it three times in a row, and by the third time, it, it was, was actually just like getting... a little. <laughs> like the air was coming out, but it didn't have time to build up whatever. The Jeremy was trying thing. to get some sweet footage of it. Yeah, and by the third one, I finally put. Um, so what was fun was tonight um, we saw a family, and they were um, had their lightsaber out, and then they were holding it, and they were doing like poses, and they were taking mm -hmm. turns posing in front of it, and everyone is just so proud and excited of all the different things that they have. It's just so cool. So it's like you're in a place with all these people who like look at the world the way that you do and you're just so mm -hmm. relatable to the other guests and um but overall the crazy thing is the galaxy said was the least busiest place in all of disneyland by far by and by very much far part of me wonders and i was hinting at this in the beginning is i think it might have to do with the location of it because we you walk into disneyland and you get to down disney downtown which is Downtown only is the only have to go through security. No ticket required. Right. No ticket right, required. Right. Exactly. Then you go into the actual Disneyland. The park itself. The park itself. And in the back corner from the entrance gate is where Galaxy's Edge is. And like I said, we had to give someone directions there tonight. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's part of the reason. And I just think people are afraid it's going to be busy. I think so, but it's not. It's totally it, it, not. It's not. Well, I wouldn't say it, it's not like oh, it's well, empty. It's not, it's, there's right. there's still people all over the place, but right. like everywhere else, it's like too many people. Exactly. I think it's I honestly think it's the right number of people. Oh, it, I, totally I think it's the right amount full. Right. It's just everywhere else, there's just like gajillions of people. Well, I feel blessed in a way that there was the amount of people that were there because I truly felt like exactly it was right. the right amount of people. I wonder if it feels that way because of the line for the Falcon. Like if you took that away and took all those people in the line and then went poof, right into Galaxy's Edge, I think then it would. And then the line be a is crazy. Um, I did see the footage. We watched the footage, Chris, of the hyperlapse through the line. It is cool. So you yes. get to experience what it's like to sit in line for 90 minutes in about a minute. <laughs> Waiting in line simulator 2019 coming <laughs> soon to Xbox One. It is so cool. I'm sure someone would buy that, by the way. They probably would. Yeah, probably. So, um, but yeah, so we like the average person could probably enjoy it and maybe in a half a day to, you know, a half a day or whatever. But well, I think any fan would going to spend a couple days there. Yeah. If I had to summarize what, what the experience is, it's like a twofold thing. It's immersion and customization. Mm -hmm. all, all they do is hit every single tiny detail exactly right. So it's like, like I, wouldn't, I, I didn't buy anything when mm -hmm. I was in there. I didn't, I got to participate in the experiences because Karen and Jeremy were doing it, but um, I, <laughs> I can't hold a camera and build a lightsaber at the same right. time or anything, but... The way that they make sure that everything—I like, will comment on this on about two seconds into the park. It's like you can't see the top of the Disney castle no, no. or the edge of a roller coaster or something. The, every single sight line from every conceivable angle is built to put you into the Star Wars universe. Absolutely. But then from there, and like, and that's that's a, like I think for a lot of people, just like being there and experiencing what that is like, and like. They have ambient sounds of spaceships flying over. Like the way that they have like the good. speaker array set up, so it gives you like the Doppler effect thing, mm -hmm. and all of this stuff. And like, is it like the stormtroopers? Not only are they walk around on the on the floor and everything, or the the floor, quote unquote, but like there's places where they're up, like observing you. Yes, right. So you get, like the effect of like there's just like people watching you when you're on the uh, on the um, first order side. Yes, and stuff, and uh, the the. Jeremy was explaining this to me, like that all the cast members have their own like backstories and stuff that yes. you can talk to them about, and just adds into all the universe stuff. And then the customization things, like if you decide to have more of a customized experience, like building the droid, building the lightsaber, yes. mm -hmm. doing all that stuff, like just down to even like you know picking what Kyber crystal you want or whatever, all this right. stuff is like it can be as individualized an experience as you want it to or as general an experience as you want it to be. Mm -hmm. um, and the detail, so like detail in the stores, even seeing, seeing what they decided to put for sale, even if you don't buy it, was absolutely incredible. Yoda's little tiny light he used in Return of the Jedi to light his hut was for sale. Jedi ration food portions, 
They're little pen capsules. And you remember rock candy? They were shrunk down like a cross between a sixlet and a uh, rock candy or whatever. Or, uh, yeah, like the rock candy. And you'd put them in there and it was like on the back of it, it says, this is a portion of Jedi I would eat to keep his nutrition up for long space flights and whatever. Mm -hmm. It's just, that's just even reading it. It's like, oh, cool. Like it gives you insight. So now I can look at a Jedi and know, oh, that's what he might eat. <laughs> Imperial code breakers and credits and pets. And, um, yeah. and the last thing that we did not talk about was the cantina. If you go to Olga's oh cantina, you need to get, I mean, the most Star Wars you drink. Like it, uh, it was like you ordered it from a bar in outer space was the fuzzy tauntaun. It, that's the one I got. That's the one Kara got. And so it's more or less a fuzzy navel. Yes. But it's peach. And they put on top this, I think they call it somebody's tingling foam. But you drink it. Well, it comes out and it's stacked four inches high, the foam Something is. like that. And so I, I took a lick of it. I was like, okay, this can't really get anything numb. Come on. And I looked at it and I was like, oh my gosh. Two minutes later, I couldn't feel the tip of my tongue. Yeah, your lips go numb. Your tongue goes numb. Yeah, so I had Jeremy and Chris try it too. What, so when I went to try it, they're like, try to remember. And I tried to just grab a little bit on my finger or whatever because I didn't want to like just, you know, like, you know, lip up the whole glass or whatever. Right. And so I grabbed it and I go to like, you know, put it on my tongue and I breathe in and it's got yeah. like taken off of my finger and I it's like hit the <laughs> back of my throat. Agent. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I, I'm like outside. So at first it started of just like an irritant because you're like breathing in foam. Yeah. But then from there it was like, I needed to drink like some water or something to like clear it out because like my throat was numb. <laughs> I was like, I don't think this is the way you're supposed to do it. <laughs> he did get a legit try of the foam, yes. the second try. Yes, he did. Um, and then, uh, and then, so we all, and all the, all the drinks are cool. Oh, and I ordered a jet juice, which was like a bourbon. And as I'm going to drink it, the guy goes, "Just so you know, we use that to f power up our ship out back." You know, it's just like, <laughs> that's the type of stuff that's really, really fun. Most, a lot of the drinks are actually found in books. So Jet Juice, I'm pretty sure, is an aftermath. Yes. Um, they, oh, the Tanare oh. wine, they talk about that in Bloodlines. It, it, it's an Alderanian wine, so they talk about that in Bloodlines. Um, Jet Juice is in Bloodlines. Jet Juice is in Bloodlines, too? It is in Bloodlines, too. That oh. is, um, there's a, I just have to talk about this because that is what if you just made the connection for me. There's a planet where they basically, for lack of a better word, harvest or raise pilots. They're extremely good pilots. That's right. And it, it's a spaceport that's just above the water and a lot of pilots, if you're not good enough, you crash. Mm -hmm. And Leia needs some valuable information from this um, dock. And so they fly in there. And so the first way to prove that you're from there is being able to like land there without crashing. Right. So then this female pilot, she's like a fiery redhead, right? It's like her personal like pilot. And Leia yeah. kind of takes her on as a yeah. As a uh, like a mentor or whatever, she menti menti, and she you know, so they land and then they're trying to um, extract some information from the locals, and no one believes that this girl is really from there. So the test is if you can drink jet juice. Yes. And so like somebody takes it, and then it was one of the guys, and that guy character was really funny. Yeah. He gets like wobbly knees and like passes out. Yeah. And so they're like, get out of here, you're all uh, old world or, or off world or whatever. And she's like calm down so she just takes a jet juice and just shoots the whole entire thing and then doesn't even flinch like just takes it and can totally handle it so yeah that's that's, right. that's such a cool thing and it's like you can relate that you know mm -hmm. now we just have to figure out where they serve the what did i get the, fuzzy, the, oh. the wampa the wampa beer the white white, the white wampa I white, think it was. yeah white wampa something like that we have a picture of the menu but it's like where do they serve that one we'll have to find yeah. that out yeah but, and then like coffee is calf you know and it's super fun. Um, and they, every, all the prices are in credits. It's one for one, but it's, uh, do you have do you have enough credits to pay for this? So, um, but uh, anyways, like that is our like full experience at Galaxy's Edge. And as we continue to have more and more podcasts, we'll have more and more memories come up. But um, I highly recommend going. And I do too. 100%. Um, totally worth it. You're going to have a really, really good time. And if you even like Star Wars a little bit, this will... Give you some insights of why we're all like the way that we are. You know, <laughs> we probably shed some light on it for you and um, Chris. I mean, we're so glad that you were able to come and, yeah. and, and experience it. And 
enjoy it. Do you have any final words or anything you want to say about the park? Uh, like just like the the quick recap type of thing. Like if you like detail, if you like being immersed in a thing, it like obviously Disney in general is just amazing at that. But like in particular in this area, they just they hit everything and like. Mm-hmm. And that was the like not that any of the other stuff like wasn't fun, but everybody's different. The part that I enjoyed most was that immersion. Yeah. Yes, I me too. And you did say that you had a blast looking at how much fun Karen and I were having. Well, so as somebody who does like video work and stuff like that, it's all about the reaction of the audience. So it's like I I get as much enjoyment out of seeing other people having fun. Was something that somebody took obviously a lot of time and energy to build. So it's like it's like whoever. From the top down, or especially at the people that are actually on the ground making these experiences happen, they do such an amazing job, and they need need to be acknowledged and given credit for like how much of an impact they're having on people that are experiencing the park and how good of a time they're providing for people. Yeah, um, that yes, it's so cool. We had such a good time. I'm I'm glad we're all here. And then one last thing is where we're staying to is literally adjacent to Anaheim Convention Center. Where we will be be next next August. August. And I guarantee you, Kara is going to want to go back to Galaxy's Edge. Okay. I'm going to want to, too, because the Resistance ride will be open, Chris. Yes, it will. Which is going to be awesome. And all I can say is, Disney, please let me cosplay during Celebration. Please, I want to go as Ahsoka. And for the love (laughs) of everything, please ask her for her identification. (laughs) (laughs) She bought a Stormtrooper ID, and they'll go around and be like, let me see some identification. And so she bought it. I just thought it'd be hilarious to whip it out as a Stormtrooper ID. Be like, I'm just off-duty dudes. Come on, you know? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I thought it'd be funny to see what they do. You absolutely. Know? And so, so next year, I'm going to make one, and it's going to be personalized to me. My own number, my own everything. It's going to be awesome. It is going to be awesome. So, so, well, that's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Why don't you go ahead and give us a like. If you've been to Galaxy's Edge, comment and tell us what you liked about it. Let us know like where you went. Did you build a lightsaber? What's your droid's name? Let me know. <laughs> Our droids can meet up. That's right. And then Kara, like? I I mean, if you guys like what we're doing, go ahead and subscribe to us. And if you really, really love us, go ahead and click on the bell so you'll be notified whenever we upload anything new. So may the force be with you. 